Today is a very exciting day in the Speed Laboratory because we are working on the 474 cubic inch plant for my Pontiac Firebird. This is a way cooler reveal in my head. Let's get to it. For those of you who did not see me pick up this baby at Butler Performance down in Tennessee, here's the shakedown. This is basically a used and abused 455 block that I sent down to Butler. They did an awesome job cleaning this thing up. They put torque plates on it, honed all the cylinders, bored it out. It's 60 over stock, which makes it a 474 block. They also went through and did all the mains. They put in new cam bearings, it's also got new main studs from ARP, and everything's been checked, tolerances are already good, so I could basically slap this thing together and start it. It's even had a new cam already installed to make sure the alignment is perfect in this thing. So, a lot of great work they did, it's still very budget to do, and, you know, unfortunately it's just better quality than I could get maybe from some local machine shops who don't have the specialty torque plates and don't deal with Pontiacs a lot. So while I was down there, I picked up some other goodies. Uh, for instance, this BOP Engineering one-piece main seal. For any of you who had an old V8, you know that the rope seals fail. And at that point, they leave a puddle of oil wherever you park them. So a couple bucks well spent there. I also got a brand new set of Molly Clevite bearings for the mains. We're gonna install those today. And my favorite upgrade for this bottom end Eagle Specialty Products Steel Crank. Let's pop this thing out and take a look at it. So here is the skinny on why I got this new Eagle Specialty Products Crank. For those of you who saw me tear down the old engine, all of these journals were just absolutely chewed up. So I was looking at two to three hundred bucks in labor just to turn down and polish an old crank that had rust growing on the throws. It was more brittle than this one. It just wasn't a good investment. I instead spent the money on a new crank from Eagle. Uh, it was drilled to balance the thing. It's actually, the whole rotating assembly is pounds lighter than the old one, which means this thing's A, going to wind up a lot quicker, it's gonna be a more responsive engine, and it's gonna last really long since this thing is balanced. The other thing about it that I really like, and this is the reason it's well, well, well worth the money, even if you're just buying a new steel or a new cast crank, these journals for the rods are offset ground. They're 4.25 inches instead of the regular 4.21 throw that a Pontiac has. Gives you a little bit better rod angle as they kind of explained to us at Butler. And they're specifically sized to use these. These are 4340 big block Chevy rods that I'm going to be using. So rather than spending a bunch of money on some special Pontiac H beams, I have a set of eight of these, which again, much lighter than the Pontiac rods, even original Ram Air Car stuff and and uh, Super Duty stuff. So all in all, this is going to be a really tough bottom end. It's all balanced out. It's brand new, pretty much guaranteed to go. And Butler did go through and make sure everything fits perfectly. So I don't really have any worries about this fitting or spinning a bearing or being too tight clearance wise. So. I'm pretty happy with this. It's kind of buy once, cry once. I'm a budget guy, which is why we're using the original heads, original engine block, but this was a few hundred dollars well spent in my opinion, because I don't want to have to take this thing back apart and do it twice. I want to make hundreds of horsepower and do it one time. Let's get it in this block. getting the caps removed and these do have a new stud kit and uh, some much nicer nuts than the original stretched out bolts that were on this bottom end. A couple of these are on there really well. You can tell compared to when I com originally tore this thing down how just how much more seated they really are in the block. So I'm going to have to spin out a couple of these studs and get these removed. 
it's always the best idea to keep them in order as you're disassembling, but they are numbered. So one through five. Number four is also going to be your thrust bearing. So note the uh, kind of chamfered groove on the face and the back of this thing. And obviously this one is your rear main, which has some dimples back in here. We're going to fill when we put in that one piece seal. So I'm going to kind of rotate these out carefully and gingerly remove my nicely machined caps and we'll uh, get that rear main installed. All right, I applied a little heat around those pins where things were galling just a little bit because these are a very tight machine fit. Everything's been torqued, put together, and they're pretty much ready for bearings now. As I said before, this thing's already been uh, put together, honed with a torque plate, and they've labeled everything. So you'll notice these bearings that came with it are already numbered, and they'll indicate upper and lower in case the oiling hole wasn't a dead giveaway. If you haven't put together an engine before, obviously make sure that these alignment tabs are in the same place. And again, when you're putting your mains back on, these grooves are going to be on the same side that goes for both your mains and your rods. So I'm going to go ahead and clean everything up just one more time with a clean cloth, get all these pressed into place, and then start applying some lubricant. Last thing is going to be to throw that uh, BOP rope seal on the back here that one piece Viton deal that way. I don't have any more oil leaks like we used to have. All right, the block's got all the mains prepared in it. I uh, already put some assembly lube on them. Might throw a little more on before I'm done, but I'd let that kind of run in there a little bit. Now we gotta get this rear main seal on. Now they are labeled, you can focus camera. There is a flywheel side and the inside or front will look like this. And I have to get it on that sealing surface. Now. Uh, I'm not the best at shapes and geometry, but we do have to make one cut in this. The instructions recommend kind of putting it a little bit off the center line of the crank on the block side. So that's what we're going to do. Just kind of slip this thing on. Uh, I'll wipe down all the mains on the crank one more time and we'll drop this thing in. All right. So step one is to cut this thing in half across one of those little square indents and open it up as the instructions put it like a slinky. This will allow you to actually kind of work the thing around the crank, which I'm going to put some sealant or uh, some lubricant on, make sure that's perfectly clean before I do. Next step, before we drop this thing in, or the last step, I should say, we fill up those two spots in the block, and there's another pair of them in the uh, main cap. We fill those with some high temp silicone. I'm using some oil resistant stuff just so it won't break down if it gets some oil on it. And if we are lucky and go half inch off the crank center line, that slit we cut in the uh, oil seal will actually land right in that silicone and will not come out or leak. Fingers crossed. Main caps are going together exactly the same way. We're just pressing in those bearings, which are already numbered. The uh, thrust bearings here were labeled cap and bottom since they are identical. I believe I mentioned that before. And I did fill in those two anti-rotation holes with some oil-proof silicone just to hold that Viton seal in place. So we'll go ahead and do one through five, throw these on, and then we can jump to torque spec on the main caps. And there you have it one crank in a 455 block that's about to be 474 cubes in this pile <laughs> i'm getting stoked so the last thing is just to torque down all the main caps it's 100 foot pounds for the first four 120 on that rear main just since that's going to see a lot of force with the flywheel and everything on it i will throw a link to butler performance's website they've got literally every bolt in this engine with a torque spec They'll tell you what to use as far as either an assembly lubricant, engine oil, or a thread sealer. Since some holes in these are blind, some are not. And obviously you don't want these things to gall up or bind and not be the proper torque when you get them down. So I will bust out my torque wrench, get going on this, and uh, that'll just about wrap it up for today. And 
and there you have it. That is one freshly installed and torqued down crank. Thing just spins beautifully still, so that's a great sign. Uh, we're going to call that a good stopping point for the night, but on the next episode, we're going to work on putting a trick set of Ross pistons I got from the guys at Butler and those big block Chevy rods in. We'll kind of go over how I'm going to file the rings, set all the gaps, install the floating pins, and we'll start to make this look like a complete engine. Hopefully get some heads on it real soon. I, um, once again, want to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to the guys at Butler Performance. I called them initially not thinking I can do this within any sort of budget or by myself. I'm not anything special or an engine builder. So the tech guys there have been awesome. Always, you know, responding to email and calls whenever they can, telling me what I need to know. And even though I'm just kind of a regular Joe who's not a professional engine builder, they gave me the time of day and treated me like I was, you know, John Forrest or anybody else important. So this is super cool. I'm getting to do this and I think it's going to be one seriously rowdy street engine when we're all done. There will definitely be a lot more Pontiac content coming up. I've got some more surprises in store for the transmission and the rear end program in the Surf and Bird, but uh, we're not giving up all our secrets just yet. Stay tuned for more engine build stuff. We're going to go through a whole bunch of DIY, and uh, like I said, if I can do it, you can do it. Stay tuned. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends if you like it. Help me keep doing this uh, dumb stuff that I do on the street and in the garage. Thanks for checking in, and uh, we'll see you guys later.